All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. And my name is Adam Formella. I'm the county's ag agent, and you're watching live from Curry Tuck Extension. Today, we're going to finish our small fruit workshop. This is part three on strawberries. If you missed part one on caneberry production or part two on blueberries, you can check out those videos on our YouTube channel. Make sure that you click the subscribe button below and the little bell so you're notified when we post new videos and when we go live every day at 1130 monday through friday also check the description uh, below you'll find links to our website so if you have questions and you're watching this recorded you can send me those um, you can see kind of some of the things we're doing check out our social media we've got a lot of things that we're doing around the county and check those out and then we've got a link to our evaluation that we use um, to tell us if we're doing our job what kind of things that you'd like to see and then we've got one link to a publication today on small fruit. That's what I've been using for all of these uh, videos the past three. Um, and it'll especially useful today for strawberries. So we're gonna get started in a similar way that we've done. Uh, we're gonna go over an overview with cultivar or variety selection. We'll talk about planting, when to plant them, how to plant the strawberries. Talk about maintenance, which is less important uh, than for the other two berries we talked about. And then we'll finally finish with pest control, um, some things that you can do if you start to notice pests. So when we're talking about varieties of strawberries, there's two main types that grow well in this area that are called June bearing strawberries. These are berries that are produced, I like to say in June, but for us, it's really in May. Um, and those are Chandler or Galetta uh, varieties. The other two varieties um, from the chart, and that's from our production guide uh, for strawberries. Um, don't grow well here in the coastal plain. So if you're looking to buy a lot of strawberries, uh, maybe you want to start a pick your own or something like that, or just a large garden, um, you can find these two in a lot of different catalogs. If you go to a box store, you might not find these, and that's all right. Um, these two just grow better than a lot of the other ones out there. There's also two different types of strawberries to consider. June bearing, uh, which are the ones that are on this chart. They grow really well here because of the heat. Um, there's also ever bearing and they do all right, but they don't produce as many berries again because of the heat. Um, so if you'd expect to get berries in July, we get a lot of heat here, so they don't grow as well. So that's some variety selection stuff. When we're talking about site selection, it's a little bit less important than for blueberries or cane berries because strawberries grow um, and they're only in the ground for about three to four years before you have to replace them. And that's because the berries start to get smaller over time so you can change up that location kind of experiment around but they like to be in areas that are in full sun um, they can tolerate some shade you'll just get less berries if they are in the shade and like a lot of our other berries they do best in a well-drained soil and that works well for us here because they like sandy soils um, they don't like to be in straight sand though so you can't grow them on a sand dune uh, but they do grow well in soils that are sandy again they just don't like areas where they're going to be sitting in water where they get wet feet. Um, so that's soil selection. If you have an area that maybe like me is really heavy clay, you've got a lot of uh, water, then you can do raised beds or you can mound your soil. And we'll talk about a kind of cool thing you can do in a few slides. As far as spacing goes, you want to shoot for four to six plants per square foot. And that's kind of an odd uh, guideline, but there's two systems you can uh, try to plant your plants with. Um, Strawberries are a little bit different because you plant one plant and that's called the mother and then it sends off runners um, Which are kind of its daughter plants. And so that's the goal four to six can be four uh, Mother plants in that area or it can be a mother and all of her daughters So for a row system, that's the top image there your plants are one and a half to two and a half feet apart um, And so you're planting mother plants that far apart and then you have rows three to four feet now this system is great for homeowners because it's relatively cheap. You're only putting a plant one and a half to two and a half feet apart. And then like that picture, it's filling in with all those daughters or those runner plants. You get a little bit less production this way because you have less plants to start off with. And so they have a lot of energy growing to runners, um, but it's a cheap way. It's a great way to start your strawberries and get a good patch established. The bottom picture is the hill system, and that's probably something that looks familiar if you've ever been to a pick your own operation. So for that, they have two rows that are about two feet apart, and you set the plants one foot apart. 
And for that system, they go in and they plant all mother plants and they remove all of the runners. So it's only those plants that you've planted. It allows you to get a lot more berries, uh, but they only leave those plants for a year or two. They're pl planting them usually in the fall and then they let them produce the fruit in the spring and May time of year. And then they're either removing them or they're leaving them for one year. Um, so that's a high production system. It's something that you can do um, if you want to replace your plants often. Um, but again, it does cost more money because you have more plants. Now, when we go to plant our strawberries, the best time is October through March. Now, that really excludes the winter months. You don't want to plant them in January or February. Um, but they do well to be planted in the fall. And if you do plant them in the fall, then you'll be able to harvest your berries that following spring. Now, most of us are just planting strawberries now, and you can still get strawberries this time of year if you are planting them uh, early enough. You might need to amend your soil if you have that heavy clay like I do. Um, you can add things like chopped leaves or hay or straw, and that just makes the soil a little bit less dense. It makes it a little bit looser, um, so it'll drain better. Now, if you're doing a raised bed, you can put something like a heavy organic matter soil. Um, that's something, it's usually really dark, kind of a dark brown or a black soil, has a lot of nutrients in the strawberries like that. At planting, you wanna bury the plant uh, to the midpoint of the crown. And that's kind of where the stems and the roots attach. And you can see that in the image there. You don't want them too deep. Uh, you don't wanna plant them too deep because you'll start to choke out the plant. And if you plant them too shallow, you might not get enough root support. Um, they'll be exposed and that's an issue as well. So you wanna plant them around that midpoint. Um, then you'll wanna press them in firmly and water them. And that's important for all of your transplants. And then this bottom point here on the slide is a little bit controversial and some of it depends on the strawberry system you wanna grow and your preference. Uh, but it says to remove flowers to promote runner growth. Now that's what you would do if you wanted to have the row system where you're filling in your strawberry patch. If you do that, you're not gonna get any berries that first year. And that's all right because you'll have a vigorous strawberry bed. On the other hand, you can remove all of the runners and just leave flowers and then you'll get berry production that first year. If you do this, your strawberries will be shorter lived. You might only get two or three good years out of them, um, but you'll get a lot of berry production. And of course you can do uh, kind of a combination where you can let everything stay your first year. Um, you might get smaller berries if you do that, um, or you can remove everything, flowers and runners, and you'll get a more vigorous plant for the following year. Uh, so there's a lot of different maintenance things that you can do at planting, and some of it just depends on what you want to do. Now we talked about doing raised beds, they work well, or mounding, but this is something cool from our production guide. This little blue text box is straight from the production guide, and it's called a strawberry pyramid, which is a type of raised bed where you grow them in continually smaller raised beds so it looks like a pyramid. And so they have all of the materials that you will need the picture there is a little bit different than what you'll get if you follow the instructions. That's just one I found online. It's a little bit fancier, but more or less, that's what it'll look like. And so if you wanna do one of these, you can. The nice thing about it is you're controlling the soil type there. You're controlling how much moisture you get. Um, and so they have all of the instructions for that there. And in this picture, it looks like they're just planting mother plants. So they would probably be removing all of the runners and just getting all of that growth um, from, from those mother plants that they have. If I was doing this personally, I probably would plant the plants further apart and allow runners to grow um, because it's gonna be expensive for those supplies. So if you buy less plants, you'll still get production for a little bit cheaper. So that's something to consider. But um, if you have any questions on that, the link to that production guide is in our description. And so that's where we're gonna take our first break for questions before we get into some of the maintenance things. If you had those, you can add them to the chat if you're watching it live. If you're watching this recorded, you can shoot me an email um, and my information is on our website. And it doesn't look like we have any questions right now. Of course, if you have some, just add them and I'll answer them as we go. But this next section, we're gonna talk about maintenance. And it's less important than the other berries like blueberries, um, which can last eight to 10 years. Um, because the strawberries are only gonna be there for a few years. So if you have some damaged berries, some diseased berries, you can remove those plants um, and start over again relatively cheap. 
Um, but two important things are mulching and fertilization. Mulching, you'll want to use that. Well, you'll want to use pine mulch or pine needles um, or grain straw, and you want to put that out in February. And you'll want to completely cover the plants so just a few leaves are visible and the strawberries will grow through it. Now, mulching is a little bit controversial on uh, strawberries, and I'll go over that in a second. But if you look at the picture there, this isn't what you're going to be looking for when you're mulching. There's not enough mulch. And if you look, it's a little bit late. There's already green plants growing around the strawberries, so it didn't work well. Mulching, its goal is to reduce weeds, and it's important in strawberries because they have short roots and they're short growing. So weeds can really compete with them and steal a lot of those nutrients. So you mulch to reduce weeds and keep in moisture. The downside is, and especially with strawberries, it's a place for things like rats and mice to live that might eat your berries. So that's something to consider, um, but we'll talk about some ways to get rid of those mice and rats a little bit later. Um, so I always recommend to mulch, especially to get rid of those weeds. Fertilizing is important uh, for strawberries, but a little bit less so than our other berries as well. We have the chart below that has some of that information on when to fertilize. Uh, but basically you want two teaspoons in the spring um, and that's one month after you plant them, if you plant them in the spring. Um, if not, you wanna do it, uh, I would say probably around March or maybe into April, but usually early March. And you wanna apply that four inches uh, from the crown. So it's basically right where those leaves are. Uh, that'll prevent you from burning up the plant. And you wanna make sure that you don't get any on the leaves because again, that can burn the plant. You'll fertilize again, sometime between the middle of August and the middle of September. That gives the plant some nutrients to go through the winter. And then in our area, especially if you have some sandy soil, you'll wanna fertilize again in late January or early February. That'll give the plant additional nutrients to grow. Now it's important in sandy soils because they lose nutrients. Anytime it rains, uh, they drain really quickly, they leach. Um, so it's important to fertilize them a little bit extra. Now we're going to go on to pruning, and it's not really pruning for strawberries. They don't have woody branches um, or woody canes or stems like our blueberries and our blackberries. Uh, this process is more like thinning, and this should be done after you harvest in the spring or summer. So for us, it's going to be uh, the end of May or through June. And what you're going to do, again, keeping in mind that the goal is four to six plants per square foot, you're going to remove plants within a six foot area from that plant. So that means removing the runners if you've allowed them to grow um, and other plants that are maybe planted too close together. And what you can do is you can transplant those. And that's what this image shows. They've kind of dug around those runners so you can see their roots and then they'll do a transplant system where they move them into a separate bed that they've started from runners. You can do this for a while. Eventually though, your berries are gonna get smaller and smaller on those runners. Uh, so you might get two good years instead of three to four um, from a runner, but that's still extra production. And of course you'll wanna fertilize and water um, around those plants. Um, that'll just help them to survive after you've pruned or pruned, I say, thinned out your plants because you might've damaged the roots a little bit. So adding extra water will help. So that's our maintenance. It's really kind of easy to do for strawberries. It's not quite as important. Um, some things like mulching can definitely help. And thinning is really important because it allows some airflow in to reduce disease. Um, but it's something that you can get by without doing and you'll still get some strawberries. So that's our maintenance section. If you have questions, add them now to the chat. Or if you're watching this recorded, shoot me an email. Again, you just go to our website and that link is in our description. So we don't have any questions. We're gonna move on to our last section and this should look familiar if you've watched any of our other videos. Uh, this is where we talk about pest control. Uh, a lot of people will grow strawberries and do no pest control and you still get a lot of strawberries. But it can be really frustrating when you start to get some of these either insects or rodents and things like that. Uh, so we'll talk about ways that you can kind of manage them to reduce their numbers or reduce your chances of having interactions with them. And we'll start by talking about our large pests here. Those are really rodents. Uh, mice and rats are the big ones. They're hard to kind of see. Um, birds can be an issue and rabbits can be an issue too. Rabbits are mostly an issue though on the foliage. Um, so we're gonna mostly focus on the rats and the mice. Um, the best thing to do is put a wire cage around them, um, especially if you're mulching. 
uh, because they really like to be in there. Pruning or thinning out your berries does help um, because, or your plants, because you're allowing, again, more light in there and you're removing any weeds and things like that uh, that the mice might be feeding on. So that's really helpful, but it's really frustrating to pick your strawberries and find half of them have been eaten by mice. Um, so a cage works well. You want something that has holes that are smaller than a half inch. And uh, I like this image here. It might be hard to see on the slide, but you'll notice there's little hinges on the side. And you want something that's easy to remove because during peak season, if you have a lot of plants, you might be picking berries every day or every other day. Um, so this is a great cage design because they can remove it to go and pick the berries and then easily put it back into place. Um, so that works really well um, to, to kind of get rid of um, some of your larger rodents. For your smaller pests, there's a number here. Um, a lot of your insect pests um, are gonna be sporadic on strawberries. There aren't necessarily one thing that love a strawberry, um, but these things might show up and can cause concern. So we'll break them up by what they feed on, um, being either the leaves or the berries and kind of the flower area. So the first two are ones that feed on the leaves. They're the two-spotted spider mite um, or aphids. And this is what you'll see if you have either of those. The top image is two-spotted spider mite, and it's kind of a speckling across the plant. Um, it reduces how much photosynthesis it can do, and the plants generally look burned up. Aphids, on the other hand, look fairly similar, but you'll notice your leaves are sticky, um, and that's because aphids produce honeydew, which is basically sugar. Um, so you might notice sticky leaves or maybe some mold. Uh, you might notice a lot of wasps flying around. They like the sugar. Um, so those are two things that you can look out for. For the most part, they're not going to cause you any issue unless your plants are really young. Um, but to control them, you can put things like horticultural oils on. Um, they can be difficult to control because your strawberries are really thick and you have to make sure you get good coverage. They're usually on the underside of leaves. Um, and if you've ever sprayed a horticultural oil or put it out, it can be hard to get on undersides of leaves. So that's just something to consider. Um, but these are some periodic pests that might come by. The other ones are ones that feed either on the berries or on the flowers right before it's a berry, um, kind of in that really small berry stage. Those being sap beetles, corn earworms, tarnished plant bugs, and if you watch any other videos, the spotted wing drosophila. So we'll talk about the sap beetle first. They're these tiny little black beetles, um, and they really like to feed on sugar. Uh, they, you'll get them on a number of things. The strawberry sap beetle, sap beetle feeds on strawberries. There's one that feeds on corn and things like that. They just like sugar. And so they're gonna go when your plants have gotten maybe a little bit too mature um, and they'll feed on your plant and then they can introduce disease to your berries. Um, so the best thing to do is remove berries that you notice have disease like the bottom two in those pictures. If you have them, remove them and take them away from your strawberries. And then pick your berries regularly. Don't leave them for weeks at a time. Pick them every day or every other day. Um, and that'll help to reduce the number of beetles that you have. You can also check to see if you have these beetles by taking a couple of those berries that are maybe a little bit too, too mature for you to eat. They're a little rotten and you can put them in a cup beside uh, your strawberries and it should draw in uh, some of those sap beetles. So that's a way you can help monitor to see if they're an issue. Um, most people might find one or two and that's really not a problem. It becomes a problem when you've got 15 or 20 on your berries. Um, so those are sap beetles, might be something, a small black beetle you see. Corn earworm is a really frustrating insect. Um, it's a little bit deceiving, the name corn earworm. If you've ever had corn and you've grown it in your garden, you've probably seen these before. They feed in the tips of ear, but they also feed in tomatoes, peppers, eggplant. They basically feed on anything that you can grow. And this is what you'll see um, kind of on your strawberries. They usually feed around the top area, but sometimes they'll go into the strawberries. They're a relatively uh, small pest or not important pest for strawberries. They're really not that common on them, uh, but if you get them, they can be frustrating because they eat a lot of berries. Uh, they're pretty ferocious and they bite if you pick them up. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you see some caterpillars, they might bite you. It doesn't hurt, it's mostly a pinch, but something to consider. The way you can control these is just make sure that you're properly um, thinning out your strawberry plants. That allows airflow. They really like dark areas. They don't like to be in the sun. 
And then if you see them, get rid of them. Um, that'll help too. There's nothing like planting them away from corn doesn't really help because they kind of just go everywhere. Um, there's also things like BT, which is organic. And I've talked about it in a lot of the other videos, but it works for caterpillars. It only kills caterpillars. Uh, so you can put it out and that'll work well for these. Tarnished plant bug is a tiny little bug. It looks a lot like a ladybug in size, although they're all brown. And they feed really early on in your strawberries. They feed the, on the tiny little green berries. And the result will look like this, that top image there, where the berries are kind of scrunched up on the end. There's a number of things that'll do this to your strawberries. Um, so if you have freeze damage, it'll do that. But your the seeds on the berries will look red or brown. Um, so that's something to kind of differentiate between the two of those. And you can also get this if you have poor pollination. So maybe you put a cover over top of your strawberries and you didn't remove it in time. Um, you'll notice they'll look a, a lot like this, but the seeds will be very small. They won't be uniform in size. So that's how you know this is tarnished plant bug damage. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do once the strawberries look like this. But to prevent this, what you can do is make sure that you weed properly around your strawberries whether that's putting in a mulch or weeding by hand and making sure that your strawberries have plenty of light and plenty of area around them that's weed free. These things mostly like to feed on, on grain. Um, they like to feed, if you have any grasses that are weeds, they'll feed on that. Um, they're around a lot of flowers um, that are in weeds. So um, that's really the best way to get rid of them that you won't really notice them in your strawberries. So. Um, that'll just help you prevent getting strawberries that look like this. They don't taste any different. Um, on the end there, they might not uh, fully mature, so they might be white and kind of corky on the inside. Um, but other than that, it's a, a perfectly fine strawberry. And so the last strawberry is spotted wing Drosophila, the last pest. This is one that we talked about in all of the other videos. Um, and the top image there is what it looks like when it's in a strawberry. They're not as big of an issue in strawberries as they are in blueberries or blackberries or raspberries. Um, they're relatively easy to see when they're in a strawberry. And just like blueberries, the best advice is don't eat berries that are squishy. Um, it's pretty easy advice. A lot of people will uh, cut open strawberries when they eat them. That's a great way to notice that you've got them in there. Um, or if you're gonna eat them whole, just make sure you pick firm ones. But for the most part, they're easy to see when they're inside of there. Row covers work really well. Um, you want one that has very small holes, less than one millimeter, and there's a lot of insecticide or insect uh, row covers out there. Um, you can use window screens as well. And this image here, the bottom one, is one that I uh, wouldn't recommend doing for strawberries. And you'll notice they've got logs covering up the rope the, or the, the mesh. The problem is when you have to harvest them every day, you're going to have to move that every single day and it gets frustrating. So you want to make sure that you plan ahead when you're planting your strawberries for that row cover. Um, they really help not only with rodents, but with these tiny flies. Um, so it looks like we have one question and the question is, what about slugs? Uh, slugs can be an issue in strawberries and they're kind of frustrating. They're more of an issue when you mulch. Um, and if you mulch with something that's got a heavy wood, they'll be in there. Um, but they can also be in straw mulches. A big thing is if you thin out your strawberries um, and you allow a lot of light down in there, then the slugs don't really like that. And there's a lot of products out there that you can put down in your uh, strawberries that work for slugs that you don't have to worry about for um, things like bees um, and, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of slug specific um, products out there. Of course, you usually don't notice slugs until the berries are out. Um, so it's something you just have to keep on top of. The best way to find them is to go out at night, especially if you have a cool night, you'll notice that you have slugs. Um, so that's the best way to decide if you have slugs and then hopefully help reduce your slug populations. And it doesn't look like we have any other questions at this point, but if you do, you can add them to the chat. Um, and if you're watching this recorded, you can watch or you can uh, send me any questions through my email. Uh, you find that link at our website. Of course, take some time to look at our evaluation. It takes about, uh, it's about five questions, so it shouldn't take you more than a minute or two. And just leave some comments if you have any uh, about this presentation or maybe others you'd like to see. Uh, but that's all we have today from our small fruit workshop, the last part. 
live from Curry Tuck Extension. Uh, make sure that you tune in tomorrow at 1130. You'll see me again, but I'll be presenting Chris Blaha's Establishing New Lawns presentation. And it's a great presentation if you're interested in starting a new lawn or if you've had issues with starting lawns in the past. Um, so with that, that's all we've got today from live from Curry Tuck Extension. We hope to see you tomorrow.